The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the importance of preventing injuries from falling objects. This plot represents historical data of construction injuries relating to motion. The x-axis displays the body part that was injured, and the different colors represent the root cause of the injury. From this plot, it is important to note that the struck by category shown represents injuries due to gravity-related falling objects. Shown by the plot, the two body parts affected by this category, which are shown in orange, are the head and feet. This next plot represents the severity of the falling object injuries. Once again, it is important to note that the leaders of this category are the head and feet. As such, this project will focus on the impacts of falling objects on a worker's head and feet. Personal protective equipment is vital on every work site and should be worn at all times. Steel toe boots prevent foot injuries while hard hats prevent injuries to a worker's skull. But is personal protective equipment enough on its own? The answer, of course, is no. On every job site, there are a variety of tools. These tools are used for any number of tasks and are essential in progressing the project. Although these tools are necessary, they can produce significant falling hazards while working at heights. For example, if a 6.2 pound wrench is dropped from a height of 6 feet onto the portion of the foot that is not protected by the steel toe casing, an injury will certainly occur. The velocity of the falling tool can be calculated by the square root of 2 times the gravitational constant times the fall height. The kinetic energy is calculated by 0.5 times the mass times the velocity squared. Finally, the impact force is calculated by the kinetic energy divided by the foot deformation. In this scenario, the velocity of the falling wrench is 19.7 feet per second, and assuming a foot deformation of 0.5 inches, the impact force is 893 pounds. This video demonstrates the falling wrench scenario where the steel toe is the target of the tool. This video demonstrates the same scenario where the middle of the foot is the target. In this video, the top of the foot is the target. In addition to foot injuries, neck injuries are common from falling objects as well. Let's take the same scenario as before, where a 6.2 pound wrench is dropped from a height of 6 feet and lands in the center of the hard hat, which puts a vertical force on the neck in compression of 446 pounds. However, if this force does not hit completely vertical, 
there will be both horizontal and vertical force components. Assuming an angle of 45 degrees, both vertical and horizontal force components will be 315 pounds. These forces lead to torsion in your neck, which can cause significant injury. If the drop height is extended to 20 feet, the vertical and horizontal components of the force are increased to 1,050 pounds. This is equivalent of having a full-grown horse stand on your head creating a force and compression, and another horse creating a horizontal component in your neck. This video displays a torsional neck model after a worker is hit with a 6.2 pound wrench from a drop height of 6 feet. In this video, the tool is changed to a 5 pound grinder. So what is the solution to preventing these injuries? Number 1. Before starting your above ground task, complete a field level risk assessment to identify hazards and control methods for hoisting, lowering, or working with materials and tools at heights. Number 2. Hoisting or lowering materials and tools. Inspect ropes, pulleys, canvas bags, harnesses, and rigging before use. Ensure that a barrier has been erected or that the dangerous area has been flagged off. Communicate with your fellow workers and those in the lift area. Use proper lifting harnesses for water jugs or propane bottles. There is added caution required when lifting over the top handrail. And finally, remember to keep the load weight manageable. Number 3. Preparing for and working at height. Identify floor, deck, or handrail openings and be aware of material or tool placement. Before use, always inspect a tool to ensure integrity. Use tool lanyards to secure small tools or ropes for heavier tools, such as impact guns or mag drills. Ensure protective devices are in place on tools such as pry bars or files to prevent item from going through graded decks. Never place or store tools or materials on I-beams, piping, cable trays, instruments, vessel skirts, or scaffold tubes. Number 4. Housekeeping. When continuing a task to the next shift, place and secure tools 
and or materials where they cannot be dislodged. When task is complete, remove all studs, nuts, shims, washers, grading cutouts, and tools. Scaffold material should be taken to the storage area. Come on, swing. Uh -huh.